verses 9 to 13. She was found guilty of sharing with her husband in his sin, by a question that Peter asked her, V8 tell me whether you sold the land for so much, naming the sum which Ananias had brought and laid at the apostles' feet. Was this all you received for the sale of the land, and had you no more for it? No, saith she, we had no more, but that was every farthing we received. Ananias and his wife agreed to tell the same story, and the bargain being private, and by consent kept to themselves, nobody could disprove them, and therefore they thought they might safely stand in the lie, and should gain credit to it. It is sad to see those relations who should quicken one another to that which is good harden one another in that which is f sentence was passed upon her, that she should partake in her husband's doom, v9. Her sin is opened, how is it that you have agreed together to tempt the spirit of the Lord? Before he passes sentence, he makes her to know her abominations, and shows her the evil of her sin. That they tempted the spirit of the Lord, as Israel tempted God in the desert, when they said, is the Lord among us, or is he not? After they had seen so many miraculous proofs of his power, and not only his presence, but his presidency, when they said, can God furnish a table? So here, can the spirit in the apostles discover this fraud? Can they discern that this is but a part of the price, when we tell them it is the whole? Can he judge through this dark cloud? Job 22:13. They saw that the apostles had the gift of tongues, but had they the gift of discerning spirits? Those that presume upon security and impunity in sin tempt the spirit of God, they tempt God as if he were altogether such a one as themselves. That they agreed together to do it, making the bond of their relation to each other, which by the divine institution is a sacred tie, to become a bond of iniquity. It is hard to say which is worse between yoke fellows and other relations a discord in good or concord in evil. It seems to intimate that their agreeing together to do it was a further tempting of the spirit, as if, when they had engaged to keep one another's counsel in this matter, even the spirit of the Lord himself could not discover them. Thus they digged deep to hide their counsel from the Lord, but were made to know it is in vain. How is it that you are thus infatuated? What strange stupidity has seized you? that you would venture to make trial of that which is past dispute. How is it that you, who are baptized Christians, do not understand yourselves better? How durst you run so great a risk? Her doom is read, Behold, the feet of those who have buried thy husband are at the door, perhaps he heard them coming, or knew that they could not be long and they shall carry thee out. As Adam and Eve, who agreed to eat the forbidden fruit, were turned together out of paradise, so Ananias and Sapphira, who agreed to tempt the spirit of the Lord, were together chased out of the world. The sentence executed itself. There needed no executioner, a killing power went along with Peter's word, as sometimes a healing power did, for the God in whose name he spoke kills and makes alive, and out of his mouth, and Peter was now his mouth, both evil and good proceed, v10 then fell she down straightway at his feet. Some sinners God makes quick work with, while others he bears long with, for which difference, doubtless, there are good reasons, but he is not accountable to us for them. She heard not till now that her husband was dead, the notice of which, with the discovery of her sin, and the sentence of death passed upon her, struck her as a thunderbolt and took her away as with a whirlwind. And many instances there are of sudden deaths which are not to be looked upon as the punishment of some gross sin, like this. We must not think that all who die suddenly are sinners above others, perhaps it is in favor to them, that they have a quick passage, however, it is forewarning to all to be always ready. But here it is plain that it was in judgment. Some put the question concerning the eternal state of Ananias and Sapphira, and inclined to think that the destruction of the flesh was that the spirit might be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. And I should go in with that charitable opinion if there had been any space given them to repent, as there was to the incestuous Corinthian. But secret things belong not to us. It is said, she fell down at Peter's feet, there, where she should have laid the whole price and did not, she was herself laid, as it were to make up the deficiency. The young men that had the care of funerals coming and found her dead, and it is not said, they wound her up, as they did Ananias, but, they carried her out as she was, 
and buried her by her husband, and probably an inscription was set over their graves, intimating that they were joint monuments of divine wrath against those that lie to the Holy Ghost. Some ask whether the apostles kept the money which they did bring, and concerning which they lied? I am apt to think they did, they had not the superstition of those who said, it is not lawful for us to put it into the treasury, for unto the pure all things are pure. What they brought was not polluted to those to whom they brought it, but what they kept back was polluted to those that kept it back. Use was made of the censors of Korah as mutineers. The impression that this made upon the people. Notice is taken of this in the midst of the story, v5 great fear came upon all that heard these things, that heard what Peter said, and saw what followed, or upon all that heard the story of it, for, no doubt, it was all the talk of the city. And again, v11, great fear came upon all the church, and upon as many as heard these things. 1. Those that had joined themselves to the church were thereby struck with an awe of God and of his judgments, and with a greater veneration for this dispensation of the spirit which they were now under. It was not a damp or check to their holy joy, but it taught them to be serious in it, and to rejoice with trembling. All that laid their money at the apostles' feet after this were afraid of keeping back any part of the price. 2. All that heard it were put into a consternation by it, and were ready to say, Who is able to stand before this holy Lord God and his spirit in the apostles? As one essay. 620. Here is a general account of the miracles which the apostles wrought, v12 by the hands of the apostles were many signs and wonders wrought among the people, many miracles of mercy for one of judgment. Now the gospel power returned to its proper channel, which is that of mercy and grace. God had come out of his place to punish, but now returns to his place, to his mercy seat again. The miracles they wrought proved their divine mission. They were not a few, but many, of divers kinds and often repeated, they were signs and wonders, such wonders as were confessedly signs of a divine presence and power. They were not done in a corner, but among the people, who were at liberty to inquire into them, and, if there had been any fraud or collusion in them, would have discovered it. We are here told what were the effects of these miracles which the apostles wrought. The church was hereby kept together, and confirmed in its adherence both to the apostles and to one another, they of the church were all with one accord in Solomon's porch. They met in the temple, in the open place that was called Solomon's porch. It was strange that the rulers of the temple suffered them to keep their meeting there. But God inclined their hearts to tolerate them there a while, for the more convenient spreading of the gospel, and those who permitted buyers and sellers could not for shame prohibit such preachers and healers there. They all met in public worship, so early was the institution of religious assemblies observed in the church, which must by no means be forsaken or let fall, for in them a profession of religion is kept up. They were there with one accord, unanimous in their doctrine, worship, and discipline, and there was no discontent nor murmuring about the death of Ananias and Sapphira, as there was against Moses and Aaron about the death of Korah and his company, you have killed the people of the Lord, number 1641. The separation of hypocrites, by distinguishing judgments, should make the sincere cleave so much the closer to each other and to the gospel ministry. It gained the apostles, who were the prime ministers in Christ's kingdom, very great respect. The other ministers kept their distance, of the rest of their company durst no man join himself to them, as their equal or an associate with them, though others of them were endued with the Holy Ghost, and spoke with tongues, yet none of them at this time did such signs and wonders as the apostles did, and therefore they acknowledged their superiority, and in everything yielded to them. All the people magnified them, and had them in great veneration, spoke of them with respect, and represented them as the favorites of heaven, and unspeakable blessings to this earth. Though the chief priests vilified them, and did all they could to make them contemptible, this did not hinder the people from magnifying them, who saw the thing in a true light. Observe, the apostles were far from magnifying themselves, they transmitted the glory of all they did very carefully and faithfully to Christ, and yet the people magnified them, for those that humble themselves shall be exalted, and those honored that honor God only.